It's time for House to Home with your host, Clyde Hazy, where you'll hear from local people who turn houses into homes all across the inland Northwest, and you'll learn how to do the same. House to Home is brought to you in part by River Ridge Hardware, Avista, and Rada Paint. Now, here's your host, Clyde Hazy. And welcome to House to Home. I'm Clyde Hazy, landscape architect, and uh, we're just having a real tough time today trying to understand what this weather is doing for us. I invited one of our special guests that always comes in, Tim Magney with Wilbur Ellis. Tim has Thanks, been a uh, leading person in the lawn care, plant care, uh, anything that involves the yard. And Tim just seems to have all the answers. And so far <laughs> this year, I haven't heard an answer yet that he's given me before we started today. So, Tim, I, you know, we got listening people out there. What are they supposed to be expecting from uh, there is green grass down there, isn't there? Uh, I don't think yet, but uh, we're <laughs> sure going to look for it when it is warms up a little bit. Now they're talking about another one to three inches of snow in the next couple of days. Well, so. you know, we're shooting oh. this show live today, and that's, and, and that's what we're saying is that we're still not over it. And, and here we are uh, almost to the middle of March, the first week of March, and we're still on trying to understand what is really taking place out right. there. Um, for those of you that uh, haven't had a chance or are down south and you just picked us up, well, we've here in Spokane, we had a beautiful December, a beautiful January, and we were all just saying, isn't this so nice? But we do need some winter. Right. And boy, we got it. And uh, it, yes, it's, we did. it's been a tough one to deal with. Um, again, I, I brought my pruners because, Tim, I haven't had those in my hands for a long time. And they're usually very busy this time of the year, aren't they? They really are busy. Usually we're started working outside about now. Right, right. Um, and this year we have been unable to do that at all. There's still a foot of snow plus everywhere. Right. Well, with that understanding, I think planning ahead is what I wanted to share here today yep. is that how and what should we expect to see uh, on the grass? I mean, we, we've got a whole, a whole lot of questions here, Absolutely. but but what are we going to anticipate to see what happens to the turf? You know, one thing, once the snow starts to go off, we're going to see a lot of disease under there. The snow mold's going to be really pretty, pretty um, uh, aggressive this year as it goes away. Everywhere where we've put snow on our plant material, that potentially could be damaged right. from the weight. We've got ice on everything. Um, there is just a, a tremendous amount of things that are going to happen, and our window is shrinking fast for getting those things done. I mean, well, we I talked was, about that earlier. Yeah, I was talking to one of the uh, leading nurserymen here in Spokane here just today, and, and he was saying, you know, Clyde, we are usually digging plant material by the 10th, 15th of March. He says, we're not even seeing bare ground yet. He says, right. all at once, this window is shortening up. So let's get, a, let's get our lined up here, Tim. I first ask you, what should we anticipate happening to our lawn? Because we're going to talk about all these items here as we right. go along. Okay. Well, you know, our lawn, one, as soon as we can see the lawn and we can work on there, if we've got some snow mold, we need to lightly rake that yard and not anything other Open than it just up. aerate it up a little bit, loosen the, loosen the grass a little bit so it can breathe. Is this include thatching that we need? No, not yet. Okay, we want to wait. We want to wait on that thatching because we want it to start to dry out. I'm talking about as you can see, it's starting to melt away. It's going to be laid down and flat. Okay, we want to fluff that up lightly. So wherever it's rain. matted down from yep. the snow piles or walking or whatever, kind of open that up a open little bit. If you can. So it can start to dry out. Okay, it can Once dry. Once those breathe. things happen, we can fertilize, and then we can start thinking about aerating, thatching, those kind of things if they're really necessary. But uh, initially, it's just going to be a mess of snow mold and rodent tracks and all kinds of other things that are going to be underneath this snow pile. Well, I was telling you the other day when I called you on the phone, I says, I'm watching them, looking at them, seeing some rabbit tracks go across my lawn, and all at once it just disappears into the shrubs. That's yep. what's happening. And they could be down there eating away on your, the bark of your plant material. And so they're going to do damage all through this snowpack. Right, mm -hmm. because they've got their trails that they're hunting and following. Yep. The rodents are going to be really, that's like a wandering snake through your lawn. Yep. And there is not much you can do with that. 
rake and fluff it up, yep. put some grass down in, put some seed down in it, and it, it'll actually come back and it fertilize will. it. It will. But that's their, they just were eating their way along through the lawn, right? Yep. Okay. And they're, again, they're going to be eating the bark off of your, off of your stems of your plant. Right. They love junipers. They're going to be in junipers. I go to look at junipers here in another month or so, and oh. there'll be a dead frond here, another one there and there. You look inside there and you go, wow, there is no bark left on there. They ate it. Now right. It can't move water. So those are going to be dead. So we got to well, get into pruning that. I want to share it with you. I live out in the country oh. and, and I have rodents in, to no degree, and I have boxwood out there because deer normally don't eat boxwood. Right. But guess what? <laughs> now the mice are eating them eating because them like crazy. Yeah, th mm -hmm. that's their food. Yep. So when you're identifying dead branches, dead plants, you got to open your whole scam of, of looking at things because Absolutely. these guys are all out there. There's some rabbits, there's some moles, there's some mice. And many other ones, including chipmunks and so forth, that, that, that may be down in there eating sure. some of this stuff. So we have to be aware of that. For the lawn area, again, it will come back with these uh, little trails. Yep. But we need to actually top dress, open it up, and get the air moving around the roots. Is that correct? Yeah, those, those spots will all come back really <laughs> easy. Um, same with the snow mold stuff that goes on. Fluff it up, fertilize it. Right. Get Even those things will help with the tracks of the... Uh, little buggers that have been running around the little critters. Okay. So, snow mold, do we need to be spraying for that when the time comes? Um, pink snow mold, which is typically what we have on our bluegrass lawns, no, we don't want to, we don't need to worry about that so much. It's the gray snow mold that literally kills it to the ground. And that's more on golf courses where they finally mowed right. that right. and done that. We get pink snow mold most of the time in our lawns, fluffing it, fertilizing it, and that'll take care of that. Tim is looked at in the golf course business as a guy who can make a green lawn. And I'll tell you something, he can do it. <laughs> and that's why I really trust your judgment call when it comes down to it. Right. So the green grasses that you and I pay to go have, to go play on, again, they're, they're looking at saying, oh. wow, we can't do anything right now. Right. Right? They're in trouble. I mean, because usually they're, they're already fertilizing. They're already thinking about golfers. That's not going to happen for a little while for them. So, yeah, yeah they're, okay. they're going to struggle. Now, when it comes to fertilization, what should we be looking at doing uh, when we can actually fertilize? So, yeah. So this year, uh, again, I believe just like you and I talked about, we're going to scrunch this year up a little bit. We're going to be thinking about fertilizing. We never want to over fertilize. We never want to think about, oh, I got to put on a lot. I would rather see you fertilize every four to six weeks and put out a good balanced fertilizer and then keep it green as opposed to throwing a lot down and then coming back. So we need to think about what we want to put on coming up. Okay, well, I used to always say, and I still do now, that we always would fertilize on the holidays. You've heard me right, say this before. Right. You know, Easter, 4th of July, Memorial Day, uh, right down the given line, we're usually about four to five holidays during yep. the season. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you can also top dress in between if you find necessary, right? You bet, you bet. Just a light top dressing would actually Absolutely. help out. Balances of types of fertilizer, again, when you're choosing that fertilizer that you want to use, right. the first number case is the nitrogen. The nitrogen, N, yep. Okay. And phosphorus, so then phosphorus, potash. And then potash. Right. What is the balance that we need to be running in the springtime? Is it uh, the, the nitrogen is going to give us our green grass, right? Yep. So the other thing that in Washington, they've taken away the phosphorus, the, right. the second number that is it's not supposed to be used unless you have a soil sample that says that it needs it or a professional has deemed it necessary to use. Okay. So if, if you're going to go out and buy fertilizer, you got to buy it without a middle number. So no phosphorus in there. So typically in the old days, we used to like a 3-1-2 ratio, which right. was a 21 7 14. Right. Really balanced. Right. Now we got to kind of take that away and try to manipulate that other ways. Sulfur iron, put some other things in there to help with that. Well, now let me, okay, I want to help out the listeners here. You get what you pay for in fertilizer. Absolutely you do. <laughs> so always a good buy isn't always the best buy. Right. And nitrogen is king. And king is, okay. Right. So keep that one in mind, right? Right. Okay. So when you're fertilizing, you're spending your time and energy to do it, make sure you get a good fertilizer and the name brands are the ones that are going to really right. carry it along. Right. Uh, but get a good, strong number. And again, ask who you're buying it from or, you know, give give you a call at Wilbur Ellison. Or do, 
yeah, just just do your trust homework. Trust an expert is what you need to really do, and do your right. homework because triple sixteen is really great for gardens and plant material. It's really not that kind of fertilizer you want to put on your lawn all the time. Okay, there's <clears throat> one. There's phosphorus and too much potash on there for right. all the time. At least burn it up. And again, nitrogen is king. So if you're not putting enough of that first number on to make the grass green and grow. You're putting too much of everything else. Okay. On. So you got to really think about those kind of things and, and we always, treating it right. Well, we always measure our success of our of, of our neighbor's lawn by how green it is, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We do. Or we actually go out and pay to walk on a golf course. I mean, that's how we, we measure how green right. it is. So I hope we've answered a little bit about the fertilization needs to be done. But you brought some soil testers with us, and we're going to be talking about that maybe after the break. But yep. I want to say is that... As this snow leaves us, then we need to begin to identify the ground temperature. Absolutely. I brought a thermometer that, that we Sounds use strange, regularly folks. to check that ground temperature because that, that indicates when fertilizer is going to start to work. That indicates when pre-emergence need to be applied. That indicates a lot of different things that we talk about every day in, in this business. Okay. So, again, if you are lined up to do applications by a professional, you better understand the ground temperatures and should we even ask that given question is it's not a bad idea to go hey what are you putting down right now and 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 why would you be doing that or or what what's the timing look like is and ask some questions to make sure you understand when the pre-emergence going down or if it is going down i mean we um we need all of that to happen you know success is what you say uh and I, that's where i was pointing out how green is your neighbor's lawn is, right it, it's all right. based on it so yeah. it's a balancing and pulling it together, and this year is going to be a real critical one to see how it all comes together. Real critical. I was going to pass on one other quick note is that if you're going to be moving some plant material, this year is going to be a real short window, meaning that it usually starts in March and you can go until middle of April. Right. Well, I really don't know if we're going to be doing too much until we get towards the 1st of April. Right. So we've just shortened our windows up. So we've got to be aware of that. If we're moving any plant material, am I right on this, Tim? Oh, very right. And, and you've got to be able to get into the ground, move it, loosen it up, get those hairline roots, and, and really kind of fluff it out of the ground in a gentle way before Absolutely. you dig it. And just you don't want to just go in there with a grub hole. You want to gently move it in. But the window has gotten short. And right. I'm having a concern is that I'm looking at some plant material – of the buds. Right. Now, you and I were talking about this before. What has happened? Well, some of them budded out in January when they thought spring was coming, just like we thought was coming. And now we had hard freezes. Uh, I'm, I'm really concerned about what those plants will look like come end of May, June, July, when it starts getting warm. Do they have enough energy to even grow? Are we going to see dead limbs? What, it, what impact did that cold have on those buds that were already swelling? could have been quite damaging. Right. Well, folks, there's a lot of things that are going to be coming up here this year in our yard, and we need to be aware of what's happening. Absolutely. And, Tim, after we take a break here, we want to come back and talk more about the pruning. Yep. Hear me and my pruners. But I want to be talking about the pruning of the yard and taking care of some of these shrubs. And okay. I'm even going to talk about removing of some of that ice and snow that's built up on them. Do we even want to look at doing that even at this particular time? So... We're going to take a quick break here, folks. We're going to come back. Tim, if you don't mind, we'll come back and we'll share with him on more ideas about the pruning and the spraying. And again, as Tim has pointed out, some pre-emergence. Again, we need to touch on that one, too. A lot of us, we don't like pulling weeds. I don't like pulling weeds. I don't like to see them. Yeah, and you don't like (laughs) to see them. So for right now, we're going to take a quick break. Come back and join us on House to Home. This is River Ridge Frame Shop called Frame It Today, where we can take your art, customize it, and get it ready to hang on the wall. here at River Ridge Harbor, 2803 West Garland. Welcome to a new kind of talk show, Spokane Talks, where you find news, views, and conversations that include respect for opinions, facts, and diversity. Spokane Talks, Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Fox 28. 
Hello there, Internet. My name is Braden Magruder, and I'm just coming out of the Spokane Talks building, and I'm excited to bring to you guys a new announcement that I am going to be the new host of the Youth Spotlight program. Now, our old host, Colin, he's off to Texas Christian University to pursue a degree in theater and broadcasting, and you know what? That's great for him, but that's what I like to call adulting. And you know, I don't think that we have time for adulting with the Youth Spotlight program. What the Youth Spotlight program is here to do is to bring to you guys news, the greatest news of some of the most amazing people here throughout Spokane that are, what? Just going in high school, maybe about to go into college, you know? These people are achieving life's dreams and they are so young. And I think that these are stories that you guys should know about. And I'm so excited to be bringing them to you. Now I'm a Spokane native myself. I've been performing throughout Spokane and various different shows. I just closed the show of Music Man and you know, I guess I like long walks on the beach, keeping my business attire while also keeping my french fry socks on close at hand. You know, it's going to be a great year and I'm so excited to be your guys' host. So tune into Youth Spotlight to watch me interview some of the most amazing people. Thank you and have a great day. And welcome back to House to Home. I'm Clyde Hase and joining me today is Tim Magney with Wilbur Ellis. Yes, sir. You know, Tim, thank you. And, and, and I know we kind of got carried away about this winter snow uh, on the ground in our lawns, but as I indicated, you know, we all measure our success by green. <laughs> it's either through the money that right. it generates in my business or the min of how enjoyable it is or we pay to go out and see it. And right. so we've got some challenges. I hope you've been watching and listening and hearing what will be of some big help to you. And we don't have all the answers either. Uh, Tim, we began to, to share that you even put the thermometer in the ground to identify uh, application of, uh, of weed control. You bet. And you so bet. what we should ask our applicators, you know, how do you know it's the right time? Because otherwise you will have no success in your application, right? Right. Is it early, late? What are we doing? I mean, at 55 degree ground temperature, that's when seeds start germinating. 55 so, degrees. 55 degrees. So when we're putting it in there, soil probe in a couple of inches, inch and a half deep, now we know what that top ground temperature is going to be, and uh, we watch that. I, I measure it every day at my office. Well, you know, what's, important. where'd you find bare ground? Not this year. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason you I'm see, here I got to check on every so often. Because <laughs> I, I can't see the grass or the shrubs or anything today, so I had some time to come down here. That's an archer. <laughs> Well, you Normally, know, I'm working out. I know. Right. Well, you know, and I didn't even, even have to ask you twice. You said, right. oh, you have nothing oh, yeah. else to do. I got time. <laughs> I got time. Okay, uh, being realistic, okay, right. let's be looking at some of the plants that maybe you're under some of those snow piles. What do we do with that? Yeah, it, nothing, unfortunately, because if you start making it, you know, they're going to be the ice and the snow is going to be intertwined in that and frozen. You start trying to break that away, move it around, you're going to break branches, you're going to ruin buds, you're going to do all kinds of damage to it. You just got to let Mother Nature take its course and then deal with the damage afterwards. So there's going to be broken branches and those things now <coughs> because when you threw the snow over right. there, you weren't always that cautious because it was late or heavy or whatever that snow was. Now it's on there. Well, and the so, other thing is when you do that, you'll also destroy the little rodents' houses, too. Yep. So you've got a <coughs> lot of things going on under the ground that we just can't see today or under the snow piles. So right. we're going to have to be really diligent about that and, and busy. You know, I must even point out that even icicles are hanging on the roof in some yep. spots here and there. Be careful when you're dropping those down for your own personal safety. But they'll actually break the, the branches on a uh, Absolutely. rhododendron. I had that happen. Oh. I mean, and things like that. So you you got to be just really aware of what's mm -hmm. taking place around there. Um, are, are we looking at, uh, again, we talked about the window of transplanting plant material. Uh, vitamin B, I think this year is going to be even more important to get those little roots established. Do you agree with that one? Always. Always. A little bit of I, vitamin B whenever you move a plant. I really love uh, root stimulants of, of vitamin B being one of them that works right. really well. We like to kind of fertilize them, give them a jump start and the ability to take off and, um, and want to grow in those right. environments. And when you're fertilizing your plants, I'm even going to say use some Osmocote type of a product like mm -hmm. that. Like that. Slow release. Slow release. Nothing mm -hmm. that you can just magically blast it out of the ground. 
you want to work at it and have it come into place in the Osmo Code, for example, works right. very, very well. And so going to that a little bit, that's one place where now when we put it into a, a shrub bed or in our garden, now we can use that phosphorus fertilizer because that there is we go. highly necessary in flowering and bloom and all of those kind of things. So we sell for ornamentals, now we sell that type of fertilizers with a higher second number because that's really important to them. Right. The roots, you need to get them going and you roots, just build them up. flowers, right, buds, all of those kind of things. So, I, I was going to point out, folks, when you're looking through and you do an a inventory of your yard, you need to understand that this year is going to be extremely critical. You may have some plants look just fine, but you get about the blossoming time of the year. Mm -hmm. They may blossom or they may not blossom. Or they may not. And especially like dogwoods this year are going to be because they're always a little bit different one oh, to yeah. deal with. And, yeah. and do you have any, any thoughts on that? I mean, yeah. uh, patience? I, again, I mean, we're going to have to watch them, try to nurture them, look at them. Uh, I mean, there, there's going to be, like you said, some not flower. Some just limbs are going to die just because right. we have nothing, no energy left in them. Or the frost got them. The freeze was really hard this year. Well, let me ask this question. I have a berry patch. Anything uh, with all the snow and stuff I should be like aware of? Like raspberries, Yeah, raspberries, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, the good thing about raspberries, they'll grow anywhere. So um, <laughs> they're more like a weed than anything. But, no, there, there's going to be a lot of dead raspberry okay. vines in there. Roses? You're have to pr push it. Roses. If you, didn't, if you didn't prune them properly in the fall and really cover them well, um, I think we're going to see a lot of rose death this year. Right. We are, Mother Nature takes care of herself. If, yeah. if those buds or, or branches oh. are hanging out, they're going to be gone, right? They're going to be gone. It'll freeze yeah. them right off. And so, they're, again, they, they don't take winter. Yeah. Well. So that's the time you can use the old pruners. Use the pruners. Yeah. Yep. Don't don't break them off at that particular point. No. Okay. On dormant sprays, anything? For, let's start talking about the bugs. We, we don't have enough time to cover the whole subject, but right. let's start talking about it. Well, what are you recommending? We know that dormant sprays with a fungicide to start the season is key, key for our plants. That's the one time when we literally can spray everything in our landscape, from our fruit trees to our shrubs to our, our arborvitaes, junipers. All of those things are helped with a dormant spray. And what we're trying to do is smother overwintering insects in their eggs, and we put a fungicide in there so that we help with those diseases that may be prevalent from winter. So, again, you heard what Tim said. He's saying a dormant spray to kill the eggs that are being laid that are all laying there right now. Laying there. Okay. So when you're having the application sprayed for shrubs, uh, bugs, and so on, ask the question, is this a, a part of a dormant spray application? Mm -hmm. Is right. that correct? Dormant spray is what you want to hear. Yes. Dormant spray. That's the magic word. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, I even do it in the fall. And that's another good time to do that. You can do that then, too. Right. But follow up with a spring-type one at mm -hmm. the same time. And so we should keep that in mind. So, again, and fertilization of those plants could be taking place at the same, same time you time. do your lawn? Yep, because, again, you're doing a slow release. We want it to last all season long. We want it to feed them throughout. Perfect time to do those kind of things. We either do them in, that in the fall as well right. or spring. Now, the other thing with the pruning, Tim, mm -hmm. We have to watch when we do the pruning because you can actually prune off this year, and I can see it happening quite a bit, some of the uh, blossoms this year. Oh, you're, they're actually going to, yeah, people are going to do that all over the <laughs> Tell place. Tell me what you really yeah, think. They're really going to do that. The, it happens all the time. Yeah, but this year is going to be one that they're just going to all at once is, well, last week there was no leaves, and now I can't even see where the right. branches yeah, are. Start pruning, and pretty soon you get yeah. so limited flowers. You're going to have limited amount of flowers is what we're saying, and especially like on the rhododendrons mm -hmm. and the, like on the lilacs, you should have pruned those last fall. And so you need to understand the plants you've got out there, folks, yeah. because there's times for everything. If it's strictly the shrub to keep its shape, that's different. But if it's for the blossoms, you have to understand when it's yeah. blossoming and understand that. Right. And I know there was a lot of companies similar to yours that, that were so busy with all the oh. work that they missed out on some of the pruning that they were supposed to do. I mean, there was just so right. many things they couldn't get done. And now we're, now we're going to crunch their season again. I'm worried about what what that looks like for them. So they're going to be really busy this year. Well, and let's go a little bit. And, and Tim, I'm trying to I'm trying to crowd a lot in because everybody who's here with us right, right. here today. If we're live. we got to talk about a lot. I want to talk about <laughs> another item is that uh, you're going to have the sprinkler system being put in place and turned on. It sounds strange, but we should be looking ahead and calling ahead and saying, hey, you know, set me up to get the sprinkler system going, but the ground is saturated right now, right? Right, right. 
I mean, we've got moisture in the ground we've not had for a long time. Third snowiest February on record. So, yes, it's it's going to be really wet. So, mm-hmm. But you can turn your sprinklers on and not turn the system, not turn the clock on. Okay, okay, there you go. Get the system then, energized. Then right. turn the clock on when it's time. But we're not telling you to go do it now. Gosh, no. Gosh, no, because it's too cold out there. <laughs> you can't do it. But when it is time, it's you know there needs to be some thinking process because too many times I see people turn their sprinkler system on. That was on, my point. The clock just goes on, and we don't change it for the entire year. doesn't yeah. need to be done that way. You know, no, you, you have to understand. You've got to manage that water. You have to manage it and understand how the clock actually works itself. Right. But don't, don't energize it and put it on. You can start it, but don't put it on. Right. And get it ready to go. Right. But there again, timing is everything. And we're down the road here another three to four weeks before we can even think about stuff like that. Sure. I have a real feeling. Yeah. I I hate to say it, but April is going to be probably our time of the, of the magic of the year. Oh, for it's going to be so busy. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. yeah. Tim, I'm, I almost forgot this. Yeah. How do people get in hold of you or if they would like to? You know, they, they can most of the time, we have some great dealers out in, in the There you Spokane go. That's what I wanted you to lead do, us into do that. some really good work for us. So Northwest Seed and Pet is one yep. of them. They have some great people there that sell all my fertilizers. They have access to all my chemicals, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, some places in Coeur d'Alene and Rathroom that are that are all do our stuff as well. So we've got a wide variety of dealers throughout the area that take care of that. Then the other neat thing is, is all the professionals buy from me as well. <laughs> so if you're in the market for professionals, all them are buying from me and using me as their expert as well. Right. Well, I think folks I want to point out is that Wilbur Ellis is the leading supplier distributor of all product, fertilizer, sprays, yep. all the magic that makes your yard oh, back to the point of being green. Right. And I think that's really the big, big item that I wanted to point out. And, Tim, I want to say thank you because you, you always come to my uh, rescue and say, hey. <laughs> but I, I called you and I said, uh, where's spring at? You right. know, and where's the green grass? So at this time, I'm going to say is that, Tim, we're getting towards the end. Any uh, certain words you want to share with us very quickly? You know, be, be patient, but, but I agree with your first thing. Have a plan. Get things lined up. Be ready to go. When that weather, when Mother Nature says go, let's get out there and get it done and not wait around. We're not going to have three or four weeks to just rake up our leaves in our yard to make it ready to right. go. We're, we're going to have to be going. We're going to have to be well-planned, well, well, planned, well, well oiled machine. Yep. Have ready all to your go. stuff bought. Have yep. all your plans in place. Be ready to go. Sounds good. Tim, I want to thank you again. Thank uh, you know, you it's always a pleasure. Folks, we're going we're gonna to do another segment. We're going to follow up about those fruit trees and the gardening planning and the fertilizations again because we haven't even touched on that yet, and I've, mm-hmm. I've still got more of a list here. So, <laughs> Tim, thank you, and you thank bet. you, folks, for joining us on House to Home. I'm Clyde Hawsey. Until next time, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. House to Home is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksMedia.com, which is solely responsible for its content. House to Home is sponsored in part by our friends at Rada Paint, River Ridge Hardware, and Avista. Ask Clyde a question, recommend a guest, or hear this program again on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SpokaneTalksMedia.com.